Hey everybody, Adam Savage. Ah, I am, it doesn't even matter where I am. Brandon Allinger is with me here. Uh, my hands are dirty because we have been posing my favorite bat conveyance of all the Batman films. The Bat Pod is absolutely my favorite. It's a serious piece of hardware. Dude! Right? Look at this thing. This is the real thing. Yes, this is one of the originals built for and used in The Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. Both? Yes, yeah. Yeah. So this is really what the, they are driving in those films. Yeah, and this is a practical prop. Uh, it, it was decommissioned when the studio released it and it was sold before, but it is a practical prop. I mean, look at it. You can see everything is real here. You everything know, is real. The, I was the, the touching the brake frame. cylinders, the master cylinders, all this stuff. It steers still. Yeah. The steering mechanism. The, you know, you can tell the, the engine is, is tucked away in here under these covers. Yeah. The, the spring there for the suspension. I mean, what a thing. What a build. What a build, uh, first of all. Second of all, I'm kind of astounded because it never really occurred to me, but Batman isn't on the center line of the wheels on this vehicle. I never thought about that either. Yeah, they, uh, they're offset. Yeah, they are that. offset, and he is slightly... Th wait, they are, they are actually... They are in line with each other, but the seat is off by a few inches. Oh, the rider's off. Okay, that must have That must have made uh, driving this kind of special. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I love is just the unique design of it. I mean, I think the intention is that the idea is both wheels are powered, and that's kind of what's going on here, is that oh. it's, it's driving power to both wheels, even though I think in actuality probably only the back wheel is powered. I see. And this is dummy prop stuff, but the idea is... It's that getting power to both wheels. Powered. And you remember it does that thing where it, it rolls? Yes. And he kind of rolls sideways on it, which I don't even know how that's supposed to be facilitated. <laughs> somewhere in here, something is spinning. There's supposed to be a couple. Maybe this is meant to be a pivot point and, and the whole thing's spinning that way. It is such a magnificent piece of hardware. And I mean, it is, it's, it's literally the, the prevailing image in my head from Dark Knight is that shot in the end of his of his cape flowing oh, yeah, yeah, as you're yeah. driving behind this thing. It literally is like, of all the bat vehicles, the planes, the trains, the automobiles, this is my favorite. Really? Yeah. Well, that's high praise. I, I really just, it's so weird looking and it is so, um, it fulfilled, the first time you see it in Dark Knight, for me it fulfilled like, what that reality versus fantasy tension should mm -hmm. feel like. It, it, it felt like a real bit of kit, and it's exactly what it is. Right, and I guess that was one of the things Nolan prided himself on was the idea that it was going to be more real and not just, you know, a car that looks like a bat. It now, was gonna look real. Do you guys, how often do you guys get vehicles this iconic, this, this large? Uh, this is pretty special. Yeah. I mean, this is one of the best vehicles we've ever handled. We actually auctioned this a number of years ago for the first time. Oh, okay. At that point, it was released directly by the studio. Uh, it's been with a private collector ever since. He's actually had it on loan and on display at the Peterson Automotive oh, Museum. Yeah, yeah. So it's been seen by thousands of people there over but, the past few years, and now it's coming back to market again. And no one's driven it in that time. I don't think so. Not that I'm aware of. I, uh, doesn't someone want to hire me to drive this <laughs> at some point? As I understand it, they would only let stunt drivers ride it because it's I'm extremely dangerous. I'm a stunt driver. Well, I'm a stunt driver. I mean, hey. I'll get somebody to tell you. Uh, it also looks like a terrifying thing to drive. Because as I can see, your feet go here, yeah. your knees go here, your elbows go here. This entire vehicle is meant to cradle the rider in this almost horizontal position. Yeah, it's kind of wild. I mean, it seems pretty frightening to me. But they, <laughs> say, they said when you're driving it, I saw in an interview, you're actually steering it with your shoulders more than with your arms. Oh, you, you're kind of wow. leaning into it to, to make the thing steer. Um, but you can imagine just the process to learn how to ride something like this would be... Extensive. And then they tell you, <laughs> now that you've learned how to ride it, put on this bat suit yeah. and ride it under adverse conditions. Yeah. And hope your cape doesn't get stuck in the back <laughs> yeah, wheel. Pull yeah, pulling Isadora Duncan. <laughs> um, really, truly. I, I've actually even spent time around a full-size replica of this. Oh, really? There's some folks down in Florida who do a lot of movie cars, and they built their own version of this. And does this. it run? Apparently it runs. I didn't get to see it It can't run. be street legal. I, I can't imagine yeah. it would be street legal. But this, this. Look at the tires. Look at the size of the I, tires. I'm like, I don't even know how tires like this come to be. Did they order them custom? Do you know about that? <laughs> I think they're big drag tires like you'd see on an F1 yeah. race car or something like that. And, of course, the story point is they're the tires of the tumbler. Because he's in the tumbler and then the tumbler's Right, destroyed. and then it goes that sort of chook, chook, chook. Yes. And he transforms out and this is the uh, escape pod if you will. 
and he's got all these little controls for back the throttle, stuff. the brakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I believe some of it was disabled uh, at some point. I, th I think the fuel tank's been removed. So the idea is at this point, it's a collectible. At this Fair point, enough. you don't necessarily want to hop on the five freeway on your back pod, as I, enticing as it may be. I do. I personally <laughs> do. Uh, what a thing. Um, any idea how much this weighs? It is. It is like. A, it like looks like it weighs about a ton. I think less, actually. Oh, okay. I, th I think I read about a thousand pounds. Okay. In one of the articles, um, it was built by a guy named Chris Corbold, who's one of the big UK special effects yep. guys. Yep. Does tons of the big film. And he does a ton of actual practical movie cars, like that that actually do what they look like they do. Yes. Yeah. And and all kinds of just big scale practical effects for the Dark Knight films and many other big UK based productions. I really I really hope someday I'm able to talk to one of the people who drove this because I'm fascinated by what not being in line with the wheels might do for you as a rider. Like, yeah. That, that's got to be a really interesting mapping to have. To I do. wonder if they ever let Christian Bale ride it or is it always the stunt driver? I, that is also a good question. If, I, if it was me, of course, I'd be begging to drive the thing. <laughs> you know, they took one of these, and, the, and they had a few. I think they built four to six. Mm -hmm. We didn't get an exact count, but four to six. I noticed this one is numbered two. See the DK stamp there? DK two, oh my God. For Dark Knight Two. So that's pretty cool. But they, they took these to the streets of New York City for the third film. Uh, Dark Knight Rises, yeah. and they were actually driving it around on the street. People were out there filming it with their cell phones. Oh my I mean, gosh. what a sight, you know? That must have been really fun, too, to be driving it around. Yeah, and to, and to have that crowd watching. Brandon, it's such an amazing, amazing piece. This also begs the question of, like, sometimes the hard part of your job starts after a sale. I mean, getting this to somebody to their collection is non-trivial. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, you know, this started its life in the UK. So when we sold it before, it was our London auction. It came over from the UK. Big crate built for it. Sure. Got to be handled with forklifts. I mean, a couple of guys can roll it around, as you've now seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as my hands will attest, <laughs> yes, I hope. as your hands will attest. But, um, but actually moving it is, is a bit of a thing. So I imagine. Uh, you know. Dude, uh, I know the skies are going to open up, so let's get this back inside. Thank you so much for showing me this yeah, absolutely. amazing piece. One of the best toys in the auction, I would say. <laughs> oh, certainly. Yeah, he does have the best toys. <laughs>